Yo, Chris. I'm fucking around, Lou. When I'm fucking around. My eyes is calling me, man. It's calling me. No, fucking Eli. That's what it is. Just in case you don't know that background right there, that's, uh, you, you, have you ever visited Calle Fortaleza? Oh, 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 you didn't even gotta tell me. That's down the block from uh, the Pichonas Park. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's, that's far away from the Pichonas, nigga. But, uh, that's, that's old San Juan, no? It's old San Juan, Calle Fortaleza. The Jonas Park is dead center of old San Juan, Papa. All right, all right, Lou. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna argue geographic with you of, the, of my island. What I am telling you is, have you ever seen the, the umbrellas? The, the, street, the street with that, it's covered with the umbrellas? Okay, so for, 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 for Christmas, not, they took down the umbrellas and they put, down the, they put up the flag. Yo, you got new jewelry? No, no, no. I think I, I think I, yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly new. Fairly new. What is that, black platinum? We call this <laughs> <laughs> straight, that's a lava rock. <laughs> oh, that's straight from your time in Hawaii, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Chris, uh, our, we, um, we have a guest coming on at seven thirty in seven minutes. Yeah, you well, you you were supposed to we were supposed to do something before that, but you yeah, you're no, very irresponsible. Was, um, it was a uh, Gerard's daughter's birthday, Zoe. So they did like a Zoom party at seven o'clock. Funny as shit, Chris. So you have all you have a lot of old people on the Zoom thing, and they're like trying to figure it out. They just yo, we should have been done by seven o five. That shit went to like seven twenty three. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? People were talking. They had their mics off. The the camera was off. It was just, it was funny. Did you was see? Did you did you see? Was it? Did you see anybody? Any old people naked or something like that? Oh, thank God, no, 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 no. I'm yeah. trying something new, though. What the hell is that? That looks like crack into water. Um, it's 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 uh, it's not a wuha, right? I'm gonna explain to you what it is now. Oh yeah, you uh, you know, because of your backdrop, it, it goes out. You don't get yeah. It's called the alpha brain, thing? alpha brain for the memory and focus. Not that I need it, not that I need it, but I, I, I like from a scale of one to ten, I'm like an eight. I want to be a nine point seven. You, sound, this, like, you, you yeah. sound like a guy that uses steroids. Not that I need it, but it's just to help me. Yeah, there you go. That's a great analogy. Listen, the first sign of uh, old age is recognizing your flaws. Well, you're, you're older. You're older than I am. And by the way, today, as I took my uh, prostate. No, I, I, no, no, I, I'm not scheduled for a prostate till Friday. <laughs> um. Uh, as I was doing my cardio, that's the way I'm gonna word it. Um, I was reminded of you. My knee is uh is, is acting up a bit. Mm. Feels unstable. So after all this is said and done, I'll probably I was already my mind was already made up. What do you thought? I don't think you had a uh. uh... I don't think you had a decision in it. You had to get the surgery, right? Yeah, I know. But sometimes you think that, you know, the body's an amazing thing, Lou. Sometimes you think you get, you know, uh, it could heal itself. Not when it's under duress. <laughs> <laughs> Constant stress. That needs Salud. barking. Salud. <laughs> oh, man. So, so yeah, I um... It just looked unstable. It, it felt unstable. It felt. I did the two miles, but just throw on the brace. Um, I have to look for it. That's what you got to do. Just throw on the brace. You know, the the brace could be counterproductive because it's the brace to me is like if you get a shot of 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 uh, pain medication, like you feel too comfortable and you might make you know, more damage or something like that. Um, but but no, walking, it was not the crazy. You're only walking, so you're just doing it just to support. No, 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 you're walking. 
I was doing 35 mile hour sprints with a parachute tied to my back. Chris, I saw your numbers, two miles and it almost took you three days. <laughs> I said, what is this guy doing? He's he's stopping at freaking different locations along the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Funny thing. Um, today I went to the store and every the 99% of people they have masks. So this this Julio comes in, no mask, no gloves, and this white dude walks in like 45 seconds after he, I'm already in the store. I already saw it and I hate to see it. And I even spoke to, to the Arab. I spoke to the Arab, the owner. I said, listen, you shouldn't, I know it's business, but people that don't come with, at least with the mask on, don't, 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 um, don't, uh, don't, don't do, do business, business with them. Yeah. Don't do Most business with them. They, like, they have signs. They won't let you yeah. in without it. Lou, you can't go into Costco. I went to Costco last Most weekend. Places. I went to Whole Foods. If you don't have a mask, yeah, they turn go, you away. Yeah, they, somebody's standing so, at the door. Exactly, which is which I, I like. So, white dude comes in and says, "Wear a mask, dude." And he walks straight to the back, and then he went to the to to, to the back. Then he comes back. I guess he he got what he needed. He came back and he's looking at the at the Julio. He's looking at him. he's looking at him. At one point, and then he just he just couldn't stand it anymore. He goes, "How come you're not wearing a mask? What? How come you're not wearing a mask? I, I can't wear it. I can't wear it because I can't breathe. But thank you for worrying about me." Oh, so the white dude, the white dude goes, "I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about me. You need to have a. You need to get a mask." And, and I looked at the white dude and I said, "You know what?" Um, uh, I applaud you, man, because I always think about saying something, but I, o I always worry about the response and how I am going to respond. So I, I say nothing and I continue, but, 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 but kudos to you, man. And the guy said, no, nah, cause you know, then, then you, you gotta do is give these people a little push and you know, they gotta take, they gotta take, take it and run. Oh, you know, it's ridiculous that this and this and that. And, and he's, and not for nothing. He's right. He's right. You know? But um, it, it was it was funny. It was funny. I, I liked. I, I and the thing is, what I was gonna start doing, and I know this is ignorant, Lou, and I apologize. Uh, but I was I, I always have a, I have a mask, and 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 ninety nine percent of the time I have gloves on. Um, I was gonna start coughing. Just, just <coughs> with my mask. Scare yeah, scare people. To scare people. Put your fucking mask on. I, my mask is to protect you. Come on. So w what am I, jerk off? You, you can't, you know, my life is, is worth less than yours. No, that's not how it works. Chris, you, you, you're queued up over there? I'm always queued up, Luke. He's, he's, he's going to be calling in any minute. I'll do it quick. I don't need no fucking intro. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Breeze Shooters, the show that brings you news, sports, poker, and everything in between. We love the tweeners. I'm your host, Lou, joined by my very good friend. From the Isla. Chris, straight from the island. Yes, sir. I'm glad you got that up today, Chris, because um, me and you spoke briefly, and I, I told you I had binge watched uh, the Nicky Jam uh, documentary story, the 10 episode yeah, yeah. thing on Netflix. Really yeah. good. For me, it was, um, it was a great story because I didn't know about his upbringing. Uh, apparently he was very, you know, a hush on his past, even though there was a lot of information out there early on about the, you know, the falling out with daddy Yankee and his issues with drugs, but it didn't give me the whole story of how he grew up in, um, uh, Massachusetts, Lawrence, Massachusetts, and, you know, his mother was pretty much, you know, uh, an addict, and, you know, she was prostituting herself on the streets, and, and she used to, she used to leave him and his sister, you know, pretty much abandoned, they used to run by themselves, because the dad, he, he did have a dad in his life, but however, his dad was always trying to work, and bring money, and provide for them, and as soon as the dad stepped out to go to work, the mother was always doing something crazy and they pretty much were by themselves and the kid had a rough life and you know he goes into it and he talks about 
how seeing addicts and being around addicts was just a way of life. He thought that was normal because he didn't know any better. And, you know, time goes on, whatever. His dad, um, his mother one night just disappears, takes him to a diner, goes with a guy, and boom, leaves. And they don't really tell you how he gets back home, but apparently the dad found him. And in the midst of all that, the dad was down and out. So he turned to selling drugs because he was trying to provide for his family. He gets pinched by some guy that he thought was his boy, but was actually on the cover cop. The long story short, his dad did something that's very, you know, you know, it, it's big. He didn't have a wife. It was just him and the two kids. And, you know, when you have that little window before you go to trial, they, back in the days, I don't know if they still do it. If you get pinched, they allow you to go home, but then you got to go to court for trial to, you know, to find out, you know, what's going to be your sentence. Anyhow, okay. long story short, while during that little small window, he, he, he told his boy, he goes, yo, um, I could either do one or two things. I could go to jail and forget about my kids, or I could just take my kids, flee to Puerto Rico and leave and live as a fugitive. I got Doc Ang um, coming in right now. Uh, Put a pin in it. Don't forget, fugitive. That's <laughs> my life. Uh, <laughs> hey, Doc. You? What's up, brother? Welcome to the Peace. Breeze Shooters Podcast, Doc. How you doing, sir? Salute. I'm chilling, man. Taking it easy. Hiding out in the crib like everybody. You know what I mean? I hear you. I hear you. Um, uh, Doc, my co-host is uh, Chris Soto. He actually went to Fort Hamilton High School. Um, first question off the bat, do you know Chris Soto? I do not think so. Don't worry That's about it. Nobody knows Chris Soto. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> right now we're batting 100%. <laughs> so, Even the um, people that... Even the people that do know say they don't know. So, you know, it's <laughs> fucking... Well, <laughs> good. Yeah. So, Doc, where we start? Um, I guess, I, I, you know, I was uh, YouTubing you and going through, looking at your history. I saw you you made a lot of rap songs. By the way, um, uh, Para La Mi Gente, a new favorite song of mine. I just got put on to that really good song. It, All right, good luck. It almost has like that uh, that pun feeling to it where it's just very upbeat, uplifting. I love music like that. So that definitely, I'm a big fan of that song. But I guess I want to start off. How do you get started in music? You know, where did it all start? Um, actually, in Fort Hamilton, funny enough. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> back yeah? In, yeah, back in like, uh, I was, this was like 93. Oh, wow. Like around okay. 1993. Uh, I was going to school and, you know, hip hop was very big in our, in our culture growing up as kids. You know what I'm saying? So we used to be in the lunchrooms banging on the fucking the lunchroom tables, making beats and rhyme and having little ciphers and stuff like that. So it picked up from there. You know what I'm saying? Then I started actually writing down uh, witnessing ciphers in the street and stuff like that. A local artist, you know what I'm okay. saying? Building. So from there, I just kept on writing and writing. I actually haven't written or done a song like in a while now, but <laughs> that was oh, wow. how I first got started. You used to go to PS1 and do the open mics over there? No, 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 no. I, I just did the fucking, the regular, like, house party stuff and streets, street stuff, really. Okay. Like, mostly just going around, we would fucking bump into other people that rhyme, and we would just get into ciphers in the streets and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Uh, so let me ask you, uh, from a after high school, did, did you, were you able to catch on with anybody? Did you sign with anybody? Because I saw you put out a lot of Truthfully, I did a, uh, I, I was on and off with making music. I had other things going on in life, you know what I'm saying, that were in the way. So my, my focus was mostly really on that. And making music was more kind of a hobbyish type thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I just kind of, it, it's kind of uh, like a, a stress reliever, if anything, to me, like meditation. You know what I'm okay. saying? It just get shit off my chest and whatnot. So I would do it for those kinds of purposes. And then I just had a nice stretch where I recorded a bunch of music and then a fucking hard drives crashed on me and died and I lost a lot of shit. And I was just like, fuck this. So let me tell you though, I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just... No, Doc, I, I want to tell you though, like look, just searching your, your background, you do have a lot of music, man. And um, I can imagine if you lost a lot of it, but what I was really impressed with, you're like, I want to say I counted about maybe 12 different features. I said, shit, this guy's busy, man. Well, yeah, those were done over the years, you know what I'm saying, people that reached out and wanted to get certain stuff done or whatever, so I was like, yeah, no problem. At the time, I was doing a lot more writing, 
and Not stuff. Sure. I hadn't really gotten into like doing radio or behind the scenes stuff yet and none of that. So mostly it was just all focused on recording and making music. I had a studio set up in the house. So it made things a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? People just hit me up. I'm like, no problem. Boom. And fucking half hour written, recorded, sent out. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So, I mean, you bring us to a good point. So how do you transition from making music to being on the radio? Or was that the transition or you did something else? Um, no, I just fucking, I kind of slowed down with the, with the making the music and, um, I, uh, connected with some people from the neighborhood, my man, DJ Joe Bodega, and he was doing a radio show. He started doing a show in, uh, in, um, DTF radio, Bodega Cold Cut. So I was going in with them and he was like, I'll oh, come through and hang out or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, no problem. I'll come chill. And from there, we just like every week, he just kept hitting me up like, yo, you coming through there? You coming through today to keep coming back? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. And I kept riding out, riding out. And then while I was sitting around there, I was like, well, if I'm going to be here every fucking week, I might as well contribute somehow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Instead of just sitting here fucking getting drunk like a fucking vanilla. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, hey. I was, so I was like, fuck it. I started reaching out to artists and started booking the artists to come on to the shows. And then I started getting into doing the hosting whenever certain hosts wouldn't come. I would DJ when Joe couldn't make, you know, like whatever was needed. I started making the flyers, you know, a little of everything. Oh, wow. So you got it from the ground floor and learned the, learned the business. That's good. Yeah, I did everything, you know what I'm saying, the ground up pretty much. So what's your position? Are you still with them? With What is it? I'm sorry, Bodega or Cold Cuts? Yeah, Bodega Cold Cuts. Um, well, we we stopped doing shows, uh, the radio show, like in 2016. I would say, and then from there, like, I always kept the name alive, the Bodega Coca, I took it with me, and it still represents all of us, you know what I'm saying, and I took it on, and I just, I do events every week now in Manhattan, well, not now, since we all are fucking locked down, but, you know, before this lockdown shit for the last <laughs> four years, that's what I was doing with events, weekly events in Manhattan. <laughs> okay, and uh, let me see, oh, so, I guess, through, through the radio station over the years, you developed a lot of relationships with um, different artists and, and things of that nature? Yeah. Oh yeah, what 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 between that and, me and doing this and doing events too, you know. What what are some of the artists that we may know of that you guys worked with before? Well, I mostly worked with a lot of uh, underground acts and artists from the '90s. Like I'm not really, I'm not a person. I don't dig this new school shit. Like I'm not a Hot 97 cat. You know what I'm saying? I don't tune I into you. that. Shit, that that's just just not my flavor. I don't pretend, I don't, that shit do not relate to me. So I come from an old school era where, you know what I'm saying? I like the beat nuts and oh, shit man. like that. You know what I'm saying? A Tribe Called Quest, stuff like that. I haven't worked with a Tribe Called Quest. I've worked with beat nuts, you know what I'm saying? Uh, acts from the West Coast, Raz Kaz, uh, okay. Planet Asia. Um, here in New York, I've worked with like a large professor from Main Source, and Nikki Exotic. Oh, Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Um, a, a lot of boot camp artists from Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Like Rock from Hell to Skelter, uh, General Steel of Smith & Wesson. And man, you're taking me back to high school, man. That's my high school mixtape right there. When it was real hip-hop. <laughs> that was yeah. real hip-hop. That's the golden era. Man, those brothers are still putting out dope music now. Yeah, I know. I know. You know what I mean? They just dropped just it on the last internet. year all. Yeah, a lot of it is just on the internet. You got to go find it on the internet. Um, yeah, that is live shows. Yeah. Oh wow, that's that's that, that's awesome, man. So I mean, you really. So I guess to to this uh to this gig, you were actually meeting some of your um childhood idols and stuff like that. Oh How yeah. Was that experiences was that amazing yeah. or like? Uh, you know? it, it's a it's a balance. It's a balance. Yeah, I know. You, you know, be, they say, sometimes they tell you don't meet your idols, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, exactly. But, but for the most part, though, it's been a it's been a cool experience. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's been a, uh, very cool. You know what I'm saying? There's been a lot of love shown. Uh, very appreciative. So you know, like it's cool that I can reach out to these people and build when we need to build. You know what I'm saying? Like I did a uh, shows for like Puerto Rico and stuff like that to raise funds while they was hit hard and stuff. I just did one in February, for that matter of fact. You know what I'm saying? We had a couple of people come out and rock for us. Yeah, like Tragedy Gaddafi, uh, Rusty Jugs. You know what I mean? So it's cool to, to, have, to have these these working relationships with these people, you know what I'm saying? And some of them become actual friends. Like, we talk besides music shit, you know what I mean? Like, we just hit each other up to see how, how we're doing, how family is, and stuff like that. And then other people, that's just business relationships. We talk when business is on the table, you know? I got you. Like, like, like anything else. But that's really cool, though. I mean, you're living out one of your childhood dreams, working yeah, alongside definitely. some of these great acts. I mean, and they were great acts. And like, uh, who was it? I think it was Keith Murray and uh, Redman a while ago. They were having like a live freestyle session 
And I'm like listening to Reggie, and I'm like, yo, this dude could still go. Like if he no, Red Man's still a beast. Yeah, he's yeah, like, he's, he's a monster. Yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> now Red Man's still a beast. Yeah, um, he so, has the stuff. So let me ask you: or, With that being said, are, are you producing any music? Are you like uh, helping anybody, like you know, make tracks and things of that nature? Or um, not really. Um, the only thing that I've executive produced was just for my man Joe Bodega when he put out his album. He did a, a album a few years ago, a few years ago called Four Elements. Okay. And stuff that I, me and him, we put together. He did all the production, you know what I'm saying? And um, we, I helped him get some of the artists for it. So we had like Sadat X, also Smith and West and Sean Price, rest in peace. You know what I mean? And people like that on the project. And um, we did it and it was basically like a, like a, for autism. So we did a show and made the benefit, you know, everything for autism and shit. So the cover is like the uh, puzzle pieces, which is the, sig- the sign for autism. Yeah, for the autism, yeah, yeah. That's, that's dope. That's dope right there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I try to be involved in doing a lot of charity work when I can. So my doors are always open whenever things are needed like that. Since I have the platform of doing weekly shows, you know, I have a place to do stuff. So when I can and it's necessary, I try to open them doors up and be like, well, let's try to raise some money. Because most of the time when I do these shows, honestly, it's a free show. We don't charge about 98% of the time. You know what I'm saying? So we'll give you fucking legendary acts, but you're for free. <laughs> Just come in and enjoy is that a difficult balance there, trying to get some legendary acts to be like, hey, come do it on the cuff? Um, Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. It really depends. Sometimes a lot of them, you know, like we have established relationships. I have my partner, DJ Toshi, who's also, he moved here from Japan like 10 years ago to do hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So it's basically me and him do all the work. And so between me and him, we both established a lot of respect with people over the years. You know what I mean? So, and then a lot of times we do the favors for them too. Like they, they're releasing projects. So we'll do release parties for their projects oh, that's smart. and stuff too. You know what I'm saying? So it's not just them doing, you know, it's one hand washes the other type of thing. That's smart. Good business right there. Let me tell you that. And it says yeah. a lot about you because if guys come around when you need them, that, that speaks volumes about your character and, you know, them um, counting on you. I'm sorry. I had something here I wanted to ask you. Okay, so given the climate you just you just alluded to earlier that it's tough right now. So what what are you guys doing to I guess um, with the radio? Are you still uh, broadcasting your radio show or or you uh, well on on our radio? We stopped doing the Bodega Cold Cut show itself back in 2016. Um, I was still working with my partner DJ Toshi because like he, like I said, he came here from Japan 10 years ago. He's been doing his radio show for those he- those whole 10 years, okay. so he still does his show. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was hosting on occasion. I kind of lost the interest of doing it for a little while just because, like, I feel like the market kind of got oversaturated. And, like, everybody was doing it now. So I was, like, I kind of sidestepped that. And I was, like, well, you know, I want to try something different now. I want to keep doing the same thing everybody else is doing. (laughs) No, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, where are you leaning towards now? Like, uh, what are you envisioning? Well, right now I'm trying to we're trying to build the platform to see if we start doing bringing some of these showcases back online since we can't actually have a, a space to go to and do it for now. You know what I mean? So right now we're just trying to work out the King see the logistics of how it works. A lot of people are doing similar things like that. But I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I don't want this fucking shitty shit where I'm talking into my phone microphone. You know what I'm saying? And and it's hard for people to hear. For like to having a conversation like this is not a big deal. It's easy. You know what I mean? But to have a beat playing in the background and somebody trying to rap with a microphone like this is not, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> it's all oh, no, different. It's different. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, if I'm going to do that, I want to make sure that I'm going to do it right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> gotta work out the kinks and get the logistics right to try to launch that platform and start getting some of these artists to come on in and do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, um, I was gonna. Ask, you had mentioned your boy, uh, the, the, your boy that came from Japan. You want to plug his radio station? Or uh, uh, yeah, well, his his show is um is Classic Storm Radio. You can find it on Podomatic. Just put DJ Toshi's Classic Storm Radio to come up. Like ten years worth of archives on there. All types okay. of legendary guests going back, you know what I'm saying, for a long Keith Murray's been on there, you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a lot of people. So, right. and I've done, I've hosted, I hosted that show with him for, for like about two and a half years. And then now my man Tunia is doing the hosting over there. So he does that. I also work with a, a, rap, a station that is 24-7 underground hip hop, old school, new school, you know what I'm saying? But none of that fucking bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Mumbling, none of that nonsense. Yeah, none of that mumble rap. None of that mumble rap. <laughs> yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? So you could catch, you could tune in there. We have it on the TuneIn app, or fucking uh, you could go to the website. It's Rap FM with a W W R A P dot F M. You know what I'm saying? Same thing on Instagram or whatever. There's a, uh, a lot of shit up on there. There's merch and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? To support the station, to it's free. Nice. Right. Hey, Doc, man, I, I want to thank you for coming on, brother. I mean, um, no I don't problem, have anything. I, I know things are rough and people can't go out, but is there anything that you have planned far out that you might want to plug or tell the people about or any new well, things? Well, I'm waiting to see if hopefully, if hopefully if things clear up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because they're talking about now opening back up like in June, maybe. Yeah, June, you know what I'm saying? Like that. So, yeah. But I'm figuring the kind of shit that I do is not going to be available in June, so it's probably going to be around July. Okay. I'm assuming because it's probably going to take another month before that we're going to be allowed to gather people together, like, you know what I mean? And crowds it's gonna like t- that. It's gonna, yeah, it's going it's to, it might even, unfortunately, the way things are looking, it might be even a little bit more than, than a couple of months, mm-hmm. at, at least for New York City, you know, yeah. for, at least for, Chris, you heard about but, Wuhan? Um, uh, it, it, we'll get there, we'll get there. Chris, you heard about Wuhan? Yeah, yeah, they have They, just, they numbers- opened it up and... They opened the clubs and the numbers started to go up again. They, yeah, they had it's, no it's numbers gonna happen. They're doing so it the wrong be, way. It's gonna be a serious issue because everybody's gonna have that second wave. They're gonna have to worry about. That's why I like about Cuomo the way he's trying to the way he's trying. Hopefully, he sticks to it. He's trying to op- he's trying to reopen slowly in in, in certain areas first. Because if you do something like that, you you go all in. You just, you're just gonna set us back three or four steps, and and, and along those tragedies, Pretty much. <laughs> we lost, we've, we've lost too many people as it is. Exactly, it is better to be safe and just take it easy. You know what I'm saying? And to rush into yeah, any you of know, those shit. We'll, we'll do a couple of sacrifices now, like you know, like like you just said. You know, you really can't move. You really can't do no no large gatherings. You can't you can't do your you can't do your craft. But you know what? Whenever it does open up, it's better safe than sorry. When it does open up, then then we we hit it hard. I said at the end of the day, it gives us more. The way I look at it is, it gives us more time to get more creative with our material and 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 to work within ourselves. That's Indeed. the way I'm gonna look at it. Absolutely. You start thinking of new, more creative ways to be able to do what you do. You know what I mean? So exactly. That's how exactly. we're looking at it now, trying to figure out how to how to how to elevate it and change the platform. Being that our platform from here has been taken away. Hundred ten percent. Chris is on Fifth Avenue right now. When everything opens back up, I do have plans to do something out here in Sunset. Hopefully, oh, once nice. we, everything you know, once we clear it up, I don't know if you guys know the Swedish on Sixty Fifth Street. Sixty Fifth and yeah, it's like Seventh and Eighth across the street from the Dust Bowl. Oh, okay, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I might do something over there once, like everything is cleared up, because they got the nice back backyard and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So okay, okay, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm planning on doing something there, but unfortunately, when all this shit happens, I was like, all right, it's not looking like that good. But if the weather holds out and come September or something, you know, things are better. We'll see what's up. <laughs> At the end of the day, shooters, 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 info. We'll we'll we'll, we'll post it in our in all our platforms, and 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 we'll give you our support, brother. No and, doubt, appreciate it. Now, Doc, and that, what Chris said. Any anytime, just send me a link. You got my information. I'll definitely post it. I'll tell everybody about it. And we're on the Sunset Park Facebook page too. So a lot of cats, okay. a lot of nineties cats, they love that type of music. They'll definitely love to hear right. about things that you're promoting and doing. And again, thank you, brother. No and I wish you continued success. Thank you for no jumping on, jumping on with us. Truly appreciate it. Of course, brother. Anytime. Stay Peace. safe, bro. Be safe, man. Take care. Peace. That's my that's my perspective. At the end of the day, bro. Brother, you're the editor. You know, you do what you do. I'm just, I just throw, I throw stuff out there to see whatever. You know, it's like, it's like we're cooking, right? We're cooking, and sometimes, you know, sometimes your food needs adobo, and you don't have adobo, and I bring the adobo because that's what I do. Uh, that's that's call me the adobo man. That's it. That's what I'm saying. I, I called. I said I stopped listening to you. You see, that's the problem. Listen uh, again. Uh, uh, so 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 not to ruin it for the people. So I'm assuming that Nicky Jan's father fled to Puerto Rico and, and, and was a fugitive. Yeah, at this point, I think I'm telling the whole story. But um, this is this. I think this Nicky Jan doc has been out for a minute, though, right? Probably has, Lou. We, yeah. You know, I don't I don't pay attention to the, to, to to people. <laughs> you know, I don't even want to get what, into it. Let, let, let me finish my story before you go with your bullshit rant. So <laughs> Nicky Jan's dad said, "Hey, I got one or two options." I could either go to, go into jail and leave my kids out here to fend for themselves, or I could live my life as a fugitive trying to be the best father I could be. 
So he took his kids and he fled to Puerto Rico. He had a he had a brother out there that was a hustler too. And he was, you know, fucking around with drugs. He was taking heroin and all that good stuff. So again, Nicky Jam falls in love with his uncle because, you know, he's like, yo, he's he looks up to him. Motherfucker's a big time drug dealer. Nicky Jam was a little Dude, kid. Are you, are you really gonna say the whole document? Are you really gonna say the whole story? Yo, you really? brought me back. I'm just, I'm just giving you a little cl- a clip. No, no, that's it. That we could, we could leave it right there. His father took him back to Puerto Rico. You, I don't need to hear the whole okay. thing. You're gonna I, I mean, ruin I, it for. I, I got the people. I got the people hooked. I got the people hooked. Lo tengo ahí como, como manteca, marico. Yo, I got some criticism. I, from I don't know if I should call it constructive criticism, but I got some criticism. Who's that? Yesterday. Who? By the way, I forgot to call him. Buck. Young Bucky? Buck calls me. How you doing? You know, and, and I'm like, uh, uh, Buck, you sound like you're under the bed or something. No, no, no. I got a mask. I, I got a mask on. Oh, okay, you're outside. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so we started talking. Yeah. And you know, we went through the through the through the through the uh the the the, the, the responsible good stuff first. Families are good, his kids are good, everybody's good, you know. <clears throat> and then he decided, he, proce- he proceeded, proceeded, proceeded? He proceeds. He proceeds. You know, he, he proceeded, pre- like he proceed. started, like he proceeded to tell me that I, that I fucking stutter. To stop stuttering on the podcast. I'm glad he told you. You, I, do, you do stutter. Would you call a, would you call a, re- a retarded person retard? No. no. No, that's but, not pretty good. No, correct. yeah, you can't say uh, the group of people that stutter are in that class. It's totally no, different. I know I'm, I'm you're, not you're, in that class, but you can't. That's a that's a that's a that's a that's a you're doing it right now. That's a defect. That's exactly it's a defect. No, you know why you can't. You, you can't. That's that's straight. Bullying. Whoa, 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 you can't be. Whoa. <laughs> it's like rapid fire. <laughs> Breathe. And hey, Chris, Buck, Buck is a, a thousand percent on his assessment. This is the problem with you, though, and I noticed this. You you play double dutch when we're doing the show and you want to jump in and say something, but I think a lot of times the thought is not completely formulated. So when you jump in, you're freestyling, and then you, you want to ask a question, and I'm looking at you, and I'm like, yo, motherfucker, get this shit out. I want to go out and, like, tap you in the head because you're thinking about the idea. You should think about what you want to say, and then when you're gonna get in, you have your question ready to go. Whoa! I'm Whoa! Just saying, first I'm of just, all, first of all, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't call I, me I, stupid. I, I, I never, catch you. That, that I word, catch that, you. That, you that, just call me stupid. And, 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 I, I, and I never said that. I would I, never say I, that. I, I I listen. Look. <laughs> listen. Let me explain something to you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I know what I want to say, and I, I do think before I speak. There you go. But the thing is, I have a condition. No, you don't. And you Chris. guys are making fun of my condition. Chris, don't, don't. You, 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 the group, you make fun of those people that come up with these uh, so-called conditions for themselves. You don't have a condition. So stop saying that. Stuttering is a condition. You don't have that. Stop it. So how the fuck? I, I stutter. Don't you stutter don't. because. It, he just said I stuttered. You're overly excited and you're not thinking about what you want to say. Once again, don't call me stupid, Lewis. I always think to what I always think to what I want to say. I always think what I want to say. Green eggs and ham, or ham and green <laughs> eggs? Which one is it, Chris? All I'm saying is, if, 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 if fuck you, Buck. And if I stutter, it's because I because my mom stutters. You know what my mom stutters, Lou? My mom stutters when she gets mad. She stutters. So I I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> stuttering this. The stutteredness, I inherited it. It's what happens. Don't fucking make fun of my condition. That's what, fucked what, up. What other critiques he had, Chris? Because I know it didn't that's stop That's it. There. It was all about me. Oh, he, he was attacking you. I, that's the way I took it. He, he started laughing with an evil laugh. <laughs> Can you please stop? You sound like a stuttering motherfucker. I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, Chris, but that's a lot, that. though. That's love, though, man. Only your true friends tell you that. Because you know what? For a while, I've been wanting to say something, but I haven't. Because I said... So you're, you not, know, so you're not a true friend? That's no, what you're I, am a true fr- I am a true friend. I just have a different strategy. Like I told if people... If somebody could tell me something, and this fucking world is you. 
So, 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 so I know that I don't stutter as much as people say I do, or no, at least you, as he says I do. No, you stutter a lot, but this is the thing. Yeah, because it's a condition. No, this is the thing. What did I say from the very first episode? I said, folks, sit, um, hang around. It's going to be a long ride, but I promise you we will get better in time. So that's why I never stressed anything because I said, as we get our legs under us, we, we will get to a point. You cannot stress my condition. I'm not going to, that's not going to, there's no medication for my condition. Chris, first of all, you do not have a stuttering issue. You are an excitable person that when you get excited and you want to talk, you, you, you have all these thoughts in your head, but unfortunately, they're not coming out or they're not being processed in the way you want it to be. So therefore, you hit that gear where it, the, between third and fourth, <laughs> so you, you just need a little nudge. <laughs> no shit. This is some fucked up shit. You know, um, it could be, it could, my, it could my, 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 my girl, my girl is a speech pathologist. Cause oh, I'm, I'm going to have a conversation with her about this. You know, she's a, she's a professional, but there are limitations. There are limitations. Well, with, well, with the type you of know, she I'm, say. I'm saying that <laughs> I have a condition. You saying I don't. She's going to, as a professional, she got She's gonna diagnose me if I do it or I don't. Chris, you want to get her on? We can ask her live. Let me see. Oh, wait a I, minute. I, I guarantee can I... you should tell you you don't have a condition. How do we have time? Oh, uh, we got five minutes. It's gonna take longer than five minutes. So what we do is let's 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 finish let's finish no, the no, thing Chris, now. And we... Chris, we got ten minutes. We got ten minutes. I can, I can make a stretch. Cause I got so I got I got to cut last out. Last time you made a stretch, you cut out my fucking preciosa, and I lost to the fat fuck. I lost the karaoke competition to the last fat fuck, because you, you cut out the song that was gonna put me to the top. You see, when I talk in a rhythm, I do not stutter, but I got It's like when I sing. There was a guy in Puerto. There was a, there was a celebrity in Puerto Rico. Then when he would they would interview him, he would stutter, but when he sang, he wouldn't stutter. So that's what I'm saying. I got the condition. I just go. I I could work around it. Implied. But you 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 got some serious issues. It's beyond stuttering. It's uh called uh, insecurities, brother. No, I'm not. A, I'm not insecure at all. Uh, you know, I just don't like people. I don't like people um, um um making fun of my condition. I have a condition, and then people downplaying my condition is even even worse. Because that's what you did. You told me, Chris, you don't have a condition. That's wrong, Lou. That's very wrong. You're, you're, you're big. Oh, uh, she picked up. She picked up. Hold up. Babe. Yeah. Um, I have you, your, at least your audio. It's We're on a podcast. I'm with Lou right now. I sent you a link. He wants you to join Zoom because he has a serious question he wants to ask you. All right, so where's the link? I send it to your email? phone. I send it to your phone, your text message. I need it. I need it through the email, though, because oh, so I, don't, I have to do my... Sorry, so forget it. It's going to be too complicated. Because he sends it to me through text, and I just click on it. So I'm sorry that I'm complicated. I didn't say, you were, com I didn't say you were complicated. I said... <laughs> Yo, you see? You see, how you, you see how you answer me, and now he's making fun of me. Let me get on. Let me get. Let me get that thing. Here, hold on. I sent it to. I sent Wait, it to. you want to give me your email address? Nope. I don't want no fucking exchange of emails. Yo. Oh my god! I'll 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 get on now. All right. Bobby Chulo five nine nine. Yo yo whoa whoa whoa. <laughs> uh thank you for joining us another on another episode of Bree Shooters. Uh we would like to thank our guest today, uh Doc Ank. Uh please support the brother in any upcoming ventures that he has going on. Really good brother from Sunset Park. Uh especially if you're into that 90s hip hop uh era and uh that's what he's big on. 
And with that being said, uh, there was one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. Yo, make sure you jump on, uh, watch that uh, Nikki Jam documentary, Support the Brother, really good good story. You just, you just gave him all <laughs> I your gave episodes for- one through three, <laughs> but there's still seven more to go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, what else? Oh, and make sure you stay tuned to Breeze Shooters. We will be having rapper Gravy, who is the actor t- on um, Notorious B.I.G. movie. He will be on Breeze Shooters. I just can't uh, get a date right now because he's in between California and ATL. But once I get that locked in, you guys will know. We'll be doing a, a, a promo uh, video. We'll send it out to everybody. We'll stay tuned for that. Continue to support, continue, continue to subscribe, and tell a friend about the show. And with that being said, I pass it over to Mr. Ila. <laughs> Puerto Ricans don't, don't stutter. <laughs> it's a condition. It's a condition. Listen to me. You look Do not you chase the check. check. <laughs> Do not chase love. Choose love. Do not need love. Share love. Do not fear love. Embrace love. Do not seek love. Become love. It's all about love. Even though people want to attack my condition, I, all, I, all I spread, all I spread is love. Bridge shooters! <laughs> 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 Carajo, tú jodes tanto, te meto mano Explosivo como el flaco al cuello Te dejo con los santos El orgullo de los campos Cause I'm ref for the hood Where there's a lot of grimy niggas Always up to no good But I'm misunderstood by the masses Fighting these fascists like ashes Better known as Ali You want an uprising You the knowledge that's the key To the land of the free And the home of the slaves Black, brown, and yellow Yo, we all the same And when we die, we'll eat the same remains Ashes to ashes and dust to dust We on the cusp of a new beginning For a better living I see let's work for a common good They look to be funny We don't even understand fancy cars, jewels, and money Then you wonder why your kids are dummies I really wish this shit was funny, but it's not When push comes to shove, we gotta fight the cops So it'll never stop But go sucio, un abuso Let me introduce you to the 44 mag Fuck your swag, it's guerrilla warfare Nigga, time to spaz like a bitch on a rag 50,000 guns blazing Where's the birth of a nation Who overcame Satan and defeated the Masons Mi madre es boricua, papá de Costa Rica Un latino artista que exista para la gente Te doy comida para la mente Para la revolución estoy en la frente Adelante no lo piense La pelea comience por lo inocente So let the starving artist uprise You can see the hunger in their eyes We all tired of your secrets and lies Always fucking with our lives Making cowards out of tough guys Every man is your brother So together we die Yet we all prisoners Shackled in our minds Brainwashed to obey the all seeing eye That's how they keep us in line With snitches dropping dime To the one time To reach the mountaintops of hard climb If you with me, you with me If you not, you not I'm a field slave fam Trying to pick these locks If your life stands for something Better grip these glocks Or start tossing the rocks the time is now spread the word on your block for soon if i then you can meet me at the docks doc ock